Hey guys, good to see you here nice and early. I'm just getting myself all set up and ready. Uh, so I'm just going to use this. I'm just going to stream across to YouTube as well. So just give me a minute while I get myself set I'm up. I'm just getting myself all set up and ready. There you go. If you heard that echo, that was um, YouTube going live. So that's good to hear that YouTube is live already. I thought I'd just get on and make sure that you guys can hear me and everything is uh, good. All right, cool. Wow, all tech seems to be working fine. I got an email from YouTube saying that they're having tons of problems. So it wasn't just me. Hey, those of you out there on YouTube, I've just dropped a Zoom link. If you would like to come join me on Zoom, um, you might find that it's uh, it's better there or you might find it's loud and clear um, over on YouTube. So whichever is fine for you uh, works. So... I wanted to uh, start off and do a bit of a recap from yesterday. While we're waiting for everybody else to join, let's recap yesterday a little bit. So we're doing a five-day emotional mastery uh, challenge. We're using the superconscious method. And so yesterday was, uh, was brilliant. Uh, yesterday was we did a, a recode session together. So who did uh, session number one? Give me a give me a yes if you were here for session number one. Yeah, and what was your experience of learning about the superconscious, learning about the recode? Uh, I've seen you know hundreds of you go from you know quite a lot of resistance down to down to very little. Uh, so that was exciting to see that and to have that witness. For me, the big takeaways is we've been making things very difficult. And it all comes off our past memories. Um, and it's very, it's very interesting that we don't have to succumb to any of our past conditioning if we don't choose to. But the big takeaways are this. Number one, success is not personal. It's structural. And, uh, and, and what I mean by that is it's, uh, it's, it's really... It's really structural. We think it's personal. We think the things that we're going to achieve is based on, on us. And we, we created these wounds at a very early age. And we, we've made up this whole idea that it's us that needs to be fixed or changed and things like that. And it, it's just not true. Over here is your happiness and feeling happy in life. And over here is your creations. They actually, uh, they don't have to coexist. There's no correlation between uh, feeling abundant and making money. Uh, I'm sorry, the amount of people that try to tell me that, you know, you have to feel abundant to make money. It's just not true. There's all sorts of times, all sorts of different types of people when it comes to money or relationships. They're just different outcomes. They're not, they're not connected. So it's really about identity. And it's about being in the identity of, of what you want to create. And uh, that was such a big realization. So to me, yesterday, I explained about the superconscious. We did a demo. Uh, I explained that it's not personal. But one thing that, that I really enjoyed sharing yesterday was instead of trying to fix the current reality and pop out to your desired result, what we actually want to do is we want to jump into the desired result first, become it, act in it, be it, and then let go of everything that's stopping us being it. Can you guys all understand the profound difference there? One, one, we stay here, we try to fix who we are, try to improve here versus going into it, becoming it, feeling it, and then letting go, letting go, letting go. Remember, you, will, uh, you only see it when you be it. You will only see it when you be it. And it's a very big difference. So with all that being said, look at the time. It's time to start day two uh, today. So... It's, uh, it's very, it's very, very, I'm very excited to be here. You know, this time in uh, human history, it's, uh, it's a very interesting time. Um, there will be a future. We are going to come out the other side uh, of this, uh, whatever it's going to end up being called. And uh, we need as many people in the end result 
of, of how they want to continue. Uh, so that's very important to me. Uh, very important to have you guys here. And we're going to be on every single day. So if you're ready for day two, type a number two in the chat box and let's get started on day two because day number two is, uh, is here. And what we're going to talk about today is internal conflict. If you've ever felt like part of you wants to go and create and be successful, and then another part of you is, seems to always be working against it, self-sabotage. Self-sabotage is a very interesting concept because something I always wonder is, well, who's, who's doing the, the self-sabotage? Who's the other, the other aspect, right? Like if, uh, who is it? You know, who is that other self? What's going on? Isn't it just one self? Why would there be such a thing as self-sabotage? So it's a very strange thing. So, so I want to explain it a bit, okay? So uh, I'll go back to our drawing from yesterday. We have our current reality. We have a desired reality, okay? And what, what seems to happen is as we move from our current reality to our desired reality, we start moving you know, towards it. And, and let's say that this desired reality, just, just for, just for sake of the, this, let's say that desired reality is more, is more money. Well, in the current reality here, we actually have a second tension. Okay. And so we have this tension structure where here it's not enough money. Okay. And what I mean by tension is that there's a disparity, there's a disequilibrium. Okay. So not as much as we would like, we want to have more disequilibrium. It's like, a, uh, it's like a, if water's getting pushed up against a dam, the water builds up, you open the dam, the water should flow through. We're always going to take the path of least resistance. So not enough, more money. Okay. Uh, and so when it comes to money, Money is a very simple thing because uh, who would like to know the secret of money? I think I've talked about this multiple times. People think, well, you know, money's an energy, money's a this, money's a that. Um, but I want everyone who hasn't heard this before to type this in. Um, money is a measurement. Money is a measurement system. Uh, that's, that's it. Money is a measurement. That's all it's measuring. So if you want more of it, you need to understand, well, what's it measuring? Okay. Money measures. What does it measure? Money measures the value that you have given to someone else in a way they want to pay for it. Money measures the amount of value you have given to someone else in a way you want to pay for it. Money also is a measurement that says you can use it to buy value from someone else. Does that make sense? So money is a measurement and it's all is it's measuring value and it's an exchange system. And so if you want to make, if you want to receive a lot of money, if you want to receive a lot, you need to do one thing, and that is you need to give value to people in a way they want to pay for it and give lots of value in the way they want to pay for it. And that's going to have them pay you for that value. So we've got to ask ourselves, well, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I get that. Well, what's value then? Value, value is how you help someone else to increase satisfaction in life or decrease pain. That's it. You either make their, you make their life better in some way. That's it. And, that's value. Give me a yes if you agree with this. That's value, right? So, so basically, here, here's what money does. Money, money is given to someone when that someone is going to increase satisfaction in your life. You're going to give it to them. It's going to decrease pain or increase satisfaction, but they're going to do it in a way that you desire to pay for it. They're going to make it desirable. And, and that's it. So it's a structure, okay? So when you think about this, I don't have enough. I want to make more money. We understand the structure. We understand we've got to do it. But we have this identity down here. And this identity is pulling. I want you to imagine that's a rubber band and that's a rubber band around there. Okay. So there's a rubber band that's pulling. There's like tension. It's pulling you to want to get to your desired result. I want it. I want to do it. But as soon as you move your current reality forward to here, as soon as you move and you go forward and you take this action, well, what happens is this identity 
starts creating a opposite pull and starts to pull you back. Because down here in this identity, this is what is safe. This is family beliefs. This is emotions. This is structures. So let me give you an example. Someone wants to make more money. So they go and start a business. As soon as they start a business, what pops into their head is you're not good enough to do this. What pops into their head is money's the, money's the root of all evil. What pops into their head is, is that, you know, people that have money rip people off. So what happens is, is that that pulls on them and then they go this way to try to fix it. And then guess what? By going this way, they end up back in the current reality of not enough. And they never go and make more money. Give me a yes if this makes sense. This is how a conflict happens. I'll make it real simple. There is a belief if they want to have more money, if they want to have more money, there is a belief for this person that money must be good. True? Otherwise, why would they want it? But then in their ID, I, uh, their, their identity, they must also or could also have a family belief that, you know, if you have money, you rip people off. If you have money, people want to at uh, attack you. If you have money, then, then you know, you have, to, you have to give up what you love. You have to sacrifice. You see? And so because of all of these beliefs that pop up, it pulls us down to try to fix these. And who can see the cycle? Give me a yes if you see the cycle. This is an internal conflict cycle. This is an internal conflict cycle. Who's got it? Who's got this? Who's seen this? Now, this isn't this isn't just with money. This is the same with I want to be healthy. You know, all right, well, I'm just going to start going to the gym. Then all of a sudden something pops up. I can't be bothered doing this. What do you mean you can't be bothered? It's a fun thing to do. I'm not a blah, blah, blah. Just go eat the cake. It's fine. You try to eat healthy and it pops up. And it's pulling you back to what's safe, to what's true, to what's known. And this cycle continually happens. And so what, what a lot of my colleagues do in personal development is they say, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to 100% focus on this. We're going to try to fix you. But what happens with that is that actually becomes someone's focus. I've got to fix myself. I've got to fix myself. I've got to fix myself. And it actually doesn't help. You know, I see this in health, I see this in relationships, I see this in business, I see this everywhere. It doesn't help. What we must do is we must be in action. And this is what we're going to talk about today. You get in the action of the creation. You're in flow. And as you're in flow, what we do is what starts popping up, we stay in the action. We stay in this tension. And anything that pops up, we recode. But we only recode what comes up as we're in action. Does this make sense? We recode only what pops up as we're in action. We don't sit there trying to find stuff that we need to shift, right? We get in our focus. This is what I want. This is where I'm now. This is my action. I start taking the action. As the action happens, things bubble up. You're not good enough. You can't do this. Da, da, da. And that's and then I remove them. I let them go. And I stay in action. I stay in action. And this was one of the biggest secrets of how to overcome your old identity. Remember what I said yesterday is you, you ask yourself, what would the person I'm becoming do right now? What would the person I'm becoming? So if you take this into today's, by the way, is this good information? This is good information. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're moving this along with you. This whole structure moves, the identity, the whole thing moves with you and only what's in your way, you shift. So this whole structure, your whole identity moves with you. You live from this new place and it's, it's a new way of doing things. 
It's a new way of doing things. And it's very exciting. It's very, very, very exciting to be able to explain this uh, to you because consistently we are misguided. Uh, we, we go to find things we need to change, right? We go find things and, and that just creates the wrong identity. So we're going to do a process uh, to help you get in your end result right now. When you get in, uh, when you get in the end result, and we unpack this conflict, then we can recode it. So, since you guys all done the session yesterday, we can get straight into things today. Now, I want to let you know, I have got so much in store for this week. There is a lot happening, and I've put the replay from yesterday up, so you guys can share that out. You can help others to get this, and we can really make this into a movement. I can see um, on YouTube right now, there is 83 watching this, and I can see that there's 24 of us here on Zoom. So that's over 100 people. So that's a great start. But we need to, we need to really push this out there. And uh, I'd love you guys all to hit the share button um, right now on, on YouTube and get as many people here. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, it's going to be an amazing five days and we need, the world needs this right now. The world freaking needs it. So I'd love to see as many people as we can uh, on this. That's great, Mark. Great to have you here. So let's do this. Let's do the internal conflict process. See, we're going to find ourselves in conflicts a lot of the time. And these questions I'm about to share with you are going to help you to unpack it. Okay. So the first question, and I'm going to type this in, what is your choice or end result? Okay, let's do this. What is your choice or end result? I'm going to put it to everyone here on Zoom. What is your choice or end result that you're creating? We always, 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 always get ourselves first into an end result. We're never just sitting around thinking, you know, like, what do I need to fix? Okay, so the first question, what is your choice? What is your end result? Uh, Victor, it's just on my YouTube channel uh, if you want to watch it there. Yeah, um, there's no link right now because it's just live. Sorry, mate. So what is your choice end result? Nice, thanks, Anna. A life I love, financial freedom, cool. Just type in a number one if you've done it on a piece of paper so I don't sit and wait. I just want to make sure I get the timing right. Okay, great. Let's do the next question. Let's do the next question. Okay, what is the structure? Okay, you've got three options. Okay, is the structure stuck? So are you just stuck? Have you been, are you not moving at all? So is it stuck or is it oscillating? Oscillating means you go into action, then you get dragged back. Then you end up back where you started and you oscillate back and forth and bake back and forth. So is it stuck or is it oscillating? Or lastly, is it flowing? Like, is it actually moving? You just like it to, it's moving, it's fine. So, so let me know, this, that's the, the second question. I'm gonna type the second question now, which says, what is the structure? So, you know, Dale, I, I appreciate that, you know, well, it was and now now it's here. Just what's it now? Is it stuck, oscillating or flowing? It sound, that sounds like oscillating. If it was just flowing, now it's stopped. It's back and it's back and forth. Yeah. Nice. I love it. Beautiful mansion. Feel abundant. Feel free. It's a good thing to have. It's a good thing to have. I'm uh, sitting here in mine, looking out there, absolute paradise. Can't wait to get out there and have a swim. Cool. Is it stuck, oscillating, or flowing? 
there's only three options. Is it stuck, oscillating, or flowing? I just want you to just be aware of your current reality and don't get down on yourself. Just it is what it is. Is it stuck, oscillating, or flowing? So the next question, the next question, is everyone done number two? Yeah. So the next question is, what do you think about this? Uh, what do you think about this structure or this choice? What are your thoughts? I want to unpack your thoughts. What do you think when you think about this um, when you think about this choice, what you're trying to create, when you think about it, what are your thoughts? So I think that it's hard or I think that it's, uh, you know, I'm pissed off at the coronavirus. I think um, that my industry has gone crap. I think that uh, I don't know what I'm doing. I think that I, I do know what I'm doing. So I just want you to tell me what you think think of this of this structure so the structure is i would like this end result it's currently stuck i would like this end result it's currently kind of flowing i, I want this end result but it's oscillating i go back and forth and back and forth so then the next question is what do you think about that what do you think about this back and forth and not having it what do you think please type it in or write a number three if you've just written it down Okay, either type in your answer or write a number three when you've done it. And I'll wait till I see enough threes before I go into the next one. I think I'm struggling, yeah, cool. Yeah, what do you think about this structure? I think it's becoming difficult, fair enough. Lots of people have done three, good. Okay, cool. So the, the next question, I think I have a lot to, yeah, cool. It, and it's good just to, just to put down what you think. Yeah. It's frustrating, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the next question is actually very similar. Some of you have already done it, is um, what do you feel about the structure? Okay, this is uh, what do you feel? This is number four. Once you either write it in or put a number four, what do you feel about the structure? I told you guys we were going to do some work this week, right? Is what do you, what do you feel about this? So if that's my choice. See, sometimes we can feel, well, life would be better when I had it. But the truth is, is if you think life will be better when I have it, what you're really saying is life is not good now. And, and so it's, it's understand, well, what do I feel? What do I think about this? Because if you just want to be in a structure where you say, that's what I want and you just go for it, we need to unpack everything that's there, right? So what is it that you, you feel and what do you think about the structure? Nice, Kirsten. Uh, Kristen. Well, let's just unpack it. Want to let go of the how. So I don't know how to let go of the how. I'll get there, but it takes me longer to get there than I'm comfortable with. Okay, cool. So it seems difficult. Thanks, Karen. Cool. So just type in a number four if you've done the four, uh, the fourth question. Um, what I'm doing is I'm helping your super conscious to unravel the structure so then we can do some work with this. Yeah. Okay, cool. Next question. Next question. What is your definition of self in this structure? Number five, what is your definition of yourself in this structure? So how do you define yourself when, when you think about, I'm here and I want to be there? What is your definition of self in this structure?
what is the debt number five is how do you define this person or i define that you know how do i define myself what is my definition not enough not there got to do more hard worker working class you know limited not smart enough well how do you define yourself and just allow yourself to just notice when you put yourself in this structure how do you define yourself yeah not strong weak underprepared yeah Got it. Not capable. Cool. And so it's nice just to understand and to witness the structure, you know. So, yeah, cool. Nice. This is good. I'm going to type the next one in now. So that was number five. Now I'm on to number six. So did everyone do number five? Question five. What is your definition of self? Yeah, so someone just wrote in, I don't know how. So the definition of self is someone that doesn't have the information. Yeah. What is your definition? So the next question, question number six, is what is your definition of others and the world in this structure? That's question number six. What is your definition of others and the world in this structure? Structure. So how do you define others? How do you define the world? And so a lot of us, you know, when we look at these, we, we, we define the world as a hard place, a place I have to overcome, a place that's against me. Others are maybe smarter than me. They know more than me. They're luckier than me. They're prettier than me. They're stronger than me. And just notice how you define others. It's interesting because a lot of time um, we're defining others. Um, they're defining us in similar ways. So how do you define others? It helps you to understand what's going on here. Cool. So give me number six when you've done number six. How do you define others in this structure? Great, great. Who's enjoying kind of looking at this structure and being able to see, okay, cool. I can see why this isn't moving. I can see how I'm defining myself. I'm not defining myself as this. I can see how I feel and my thoughts about it. I can see, I can see that I think over here is going to be better. And, and one of the biggest things that we do uh, as working class people is we think that the future will be better than the now. And we always have this idea, it's inbuilt into us since a very early age. When you leave high school, when you do this, when you graduate, when you get a house, when you get married, when you get, when you get a new car, when you, you know, lose some weight, when you're on this thing, then it will be better, then it will be better, then it will be better. It's like an unwritten rule in life for us that the future there's there's something to do and it's going to make life better in the future and it's a sickness it's a complete sickness and think about it if you go back 200 years ago what did they say if only we could have a motor vehicle if only i had something to wash these clothes for me if only you know even simple things like if only i could have a cold drink on a hot day you know, like we, we just, uh, you know, we assume that, you know, ice cubes and cold drinks have always been here. Just simple things. I wish I had, I wish I had. And so every generation has come in and there's one underlying assumption that the future is going to be way better. And the problem is, is every time we get to a new future, what do we arrive with? We arrive with a belief that says the future is going to be better. So we never train ourselves to actually go, you know, right now is better than it will ever be. And, and this is becoming a creative warrior when no matter what the circumstances are, now is better than the future. This is called the wizard's gate. There is nothing better than now. And that's, that's a very difficult place for us to get to because a lot of us go, well, if there's nothing better than now, well, how am I motivated? And, and that shows that their one operating system has always been now's not good i've got to get somewhere else now's not good i've got to get somewhere else and it's in stark contrast to the elite 
Stark contrast to true creators. True creators are there already. And it's like when they're creating something, they're not creating out of fear or lack or scarcity or that something will be better in the future. They simply just say, you know what? It's like, it's, you know what it's like? It's like when they go out to it, you go out to a restaurant and you get a menu and you could have the steak, the fish, the salad, the pasta. You could have anything. And you say, oh, I'm going to be full no matter what. I'm going to choose that. You're going to get it. You know, it's not about making the best of what you have now. It's about now being better than anything else. You see, it's about now being it. Yeah. So let me ask you in the structure, and I know I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really helping you to see your structure because when you're in this reality, the future is better. But when you're in this reality and you have it, you've got it. You need to start being okay to receive it. We need to be this, not this. Remember my example yesterday, I was a striver. It's not good enough. I'm going to push. I'm going to go for it. I never trained myself to receive, to be open, to have, to enjoy. Therefore, every time I would get close to it, I would always go in this cycle. So here's my question to you. What is your underlying assumption in your structure? Question number seven, what is your underlying assumption? What is your underlying assumption? What is your underlying assumption? Question number seven. It's interesting in this structure. Yeah, in this structure, what, what is, when you think about everything you've just written down, like what are you assuming? Like what, what is the what is the assumption? Yeah, my underlying assumption that will work out, just hang in there. So what I would say to that is the underlying assumption is I can't enjoy right now. You know, I have to hang in there for something else. So I'm assuming that there's no way for me to enjoy right now. Right? What is the underlying assumption that's sitting in there? Yeah, and thanks for typing in. That's why, you know, it's, I'm grateful to be able to coach you. Yeah. I have to work hard to enjoy anything. See, you can see the underlying assumption bubbling up in front of us like what am i assuming see in victor frankl's book man search for meaning he talks about how he was have he was able to have more freedom than his uh you know he was a prisoner of war in a in a nazi concentration camp he was able to have more freedom than his captors the people that captured him because he said nothing on the outside can stop me having freedom feeling it now so it's interesting that we got to go, well, what are our assumptions? What am I assuming? And am I, I'm assuming that I'm just never going to figure this out. Yeah, right. That is a crazy assumption. We literally, some of us have just written in that our assumption is I'm never going to figure this out. I'm never going to be rich. That's what I'm assuming. There's something wrong with me, right? And so it's really interesting when we look at our whole structure and we go, okay, underlying all of this, underlying all of this, well, what is the big assumption? What is the big assumption? Because the assumption is what's keeping you in this current reality. What are you assuming? Money is hard. Success is difficult. It's not for me. What am I really assuming? What is the assumption? When I talk to you guys about structure and I say it's structural, what is the big assumption that you've got? See, we all have biases. We all have things going on. And it's interesting, right, to go, well, what am I assuming? What am I assuming? Right, someone wrote, having financial freedom will make me happier. And that's, a, that's an interesting assumption. The truth is, is if you're not trained to be happy, nothing coming in will make you happier. For a little bit of time, you'll celebrate it. And then you'll just be you again. I've met heaps of people with lots of money that aren't happy. Because money doesn't equal happiness unless you've figured out how to already be happy. You see? But it's, uh, it's interesting to look at it, right? Never make assumptions about anyone or anything. Why not? 
that's an assumption that it's bad to make assumptions. I need to do something I haven't done yet. Assumption will take time. It's longer than I think. Financial freedom will give me ultimate power, right? Not really, but it's a good assumption. It's nice for you just to, to unpack these, right? Um, it says financial freedom will give me the ultimate power. What a great thing to write in. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I'm pretty sure Gandhi had a huge amount of power and um, I don't think he had a huge amount of money. And then I know others that have tons of money, tons of money. They don't have power. I mean, some of the, the, the crazy things that happened in Hollywood over the last few years show us that money doesn't give us power, right? I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't. And, but it's nice, to, it's nice to, to notice our assumption, isn't it, right? Yeah, I have to prove my deservability. What a, what a thing, hey? Imagine if we all had to be deserving of, of money, right? What a weird way the world would be. I mean, money's just a measurement. You can't deserve it or not deserve it. It just measures value provided to someone else. I mean, uh, I've got a client of mine. He's got an $8 million business and he, ha it's a, he does commercial cleaning. All the, he just cleans office buildings. He has a bunch of staff and that's what they do. You don't have to be deserving to uh, or be a brainiac to figure out how to be a good cleaner and to employ people to do it. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's not about deservability. You know, I know people who um, relationships and health and everything. But but imagine if we had to deserve it. Like imagine if there was such a thing as not being able to deserve things. So this is a very good discussion, isn't it? Give me a yes if you're uh, um, if you're if you're enjoying this. Someone says, well, what about money giving giving um, choices? Yeah, well, money does allow you to buy and have more choices, but you can have more choices and still be unhappy. In fact, uh, I remember when I first ended up with quite a substantial amount of money, uh, I hadn't trained myself to be okay with it. So I started freaking out, you know, are the banks going to close? What am I going to do with it? I found a way to still feel scarce about it, right? So yeah, it can give you more choices, but the truth is, is that we're not allowing it. So, you, you know, it's, it's, it's about understanding this and really, really, really getting that uh, nothing external can give you something internal. So you can be pissed off and angry and frustrated and you can be rich. I want you guys to hear that. You can be pissed off and angry and frustrated and you can be rich. They're not correlated. I don't care which person tries to tell you they are. We can prove it by just looking at history. We can just look at people that have made lots of money. They're not all sitting on a uh, meditating every single day in abundance. It's just not correlated. I'm sorry. The fame's not correlated. There are heaps of, you know, heaps of musicians. They sing about how unhappy their life has been. If their life was happy and full of abundance, well, then where would they write their songs? Right? And so... It's very important to, to get this is that uh, is that the personal development world, unfortunately, has lied to us. It has it has correlated um, the way that you feel about yourself with success and they're just separate. You should just feel good about yourself always. If you have money, don't have money, single, uh, in a great relationship, in multiple relationships. I've got my, my friends in here that are in those, um, my dynamic duo. You can be in, you can be in whatever. But the thing is, is what we've got to stop, guys, is that anything external changes my internal. And this was the biggest realization of my life when I sat with these billionaires, is that nothing external, nothing external changes my internal. Success doesn't change it. Failure doesn't change it. Nothing changes it because I got it. Give me a yes if that makes. That's what I'm trying to get across here. Is like is that you just feel good because that's a good thing to do. You just feel good because that's what you want to feel, right? It has nothing to do. You want to feel abundant because feeling abundant feels good, you know, but it has nothing to do with what you'll be able to create or not create, you know? Um, it's so important to get this, that right now we need, we're going to see how we are attached to things. You, you are allowed to feel abundant and happy even when the world's coming down around you, you're still going to be able to go do everything you need to do. It doesn't need to affect your feeling. 
It's very, 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 very important. Very important. So I think this was a very uh, good session today, helping you guys understand like what is actually what is actually true. So here's the last question. Here's the last um, the last question. Question number eight. The question number eight is, so where is the power in this structure? Where is the power in this structure? Where are you giving your power to? See, a lot of us, a lot of us are giving the power away. I see way too many people have given their power away to a job or to a government or given it away. And what I mean by power, how do you know where the power is? What is controlling how you feel? Where is the power in this structure? A lot of us have given the power to this idea of this um, heaven that we're going to reach. And if I had more money or a better house or a better relationship or I lost some weight, that is going to make me feel better. You see? That's where a lot of us are giving the power, you see? So look at your structure and ask, where am I putting the power? I used to put the power in achievement. If I achieved a lot, then I'd feel good, right? And if I failed, I felt bad, miserable. And what happened with this is life was bumpy because, you know, it's not about you. Things can happen. None of us knew no one knew that there was going to be a virus come and, and this situation we're in and so it okay cool but if those people that are attached and saying well oh my god my life's over because i gave all the power to the business i gave all the power to my job i gave all the power i gave the power away instead of bringing the power back instead of bringing the power back to you and realizing that there's nothing that can really change how you feel and imagine this for a second. If you could feel good when everything is crumbling around you, what a great skill to have. When everything is going wrong and, you know, stuff is crazy and, you know, we're in lockdown, can you find a way to feel good? Can you be the ultimate leader in front of all sorts of adversity? Can you feel good? I remember Tate having to learn this lesson. It was four and a half years ago. Four and a half years ago, I had a business doing extremely well. And then my business partner was killed in a motorcycle accident. It was devastating. I was in Anaheim, California, running an event. I had 170 people in the room. I get the phone call. I'm devastated. I get someone else to take the event for me. I have to ring his mother and let his mother know he got killed in a motorcycle crash, 42 years old, gone. I had to let her know. My business fell apart. And I remember saying to myself, if I can find a way to be happy now, grateful now, when I've lost all my wealth, when people think, uh, you know, that they're, they're taking their business elsewhere because they think that Chris is under too much stress. When everything's going wrong, I remember saying to my wife, if I can feel good now, that resilience, that skill, that power, I'll know the power's in me. If, they, if my best friend can be killed, my business get absolutely destroyed. If people can stop wanting to do business with me and, and make it even worse, if people can leave, if people can quit their job and my time, if all, and I can still feel good, feel happy, have a smile on my face, go for a walk. When my, my net worth's gone from four and a half million to negative half a million, when all of that can happen, if I can stay centered and grateful, I knew that that's the lesson, that was the skill. And so now this happens, hey? Now this happens, this big thing happens and guess how I feel? This nothing. I've already, I've been way worse than this. This nothing, I've already practiced this skill. Give me a yes if this makes sense. I'm already here. It, I've already learned how to not have the outside affect my internal. 
That is what we're doing over these five days. How can you take the power back? Bring the power back to you. So whatever's happening, you good, you centered, you grateful, you happy. You're not attached to making money, losing money, having a relationship, losing it. People annoyed at you. People think you're great. Whatever it is, you're not attached out there. You're going to do what's right, but you are going to show up how you want to feel. You're going to stay in your end result because no matter what, you can have it all now. And that is the wizard's gate. Right now, you get to learn how to become a conscious creator. You get to feel good now. It doesn't matter what's happening out there. And just so you know, feeling good now isn't going to miraculously mean that you make more money or anything gets better. They're not connected. It's just a thing that you want to do. Does this make sense? You don't have to you don't have to feel bad to take action. You can feel good in the face of anything. And that's what's super, 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 super exciting to me. So how's everyone feeling right now after these chats? Where is everyone? Thanks, Joel. Thanks, Christine. Thanks, Michelle. Right on. Great to see so many of you enjoying this. So here's the big question. We're going to do the recode. How do you choose to feel? How do you choose to feel every single day? We're going to do the recode. How do you choose to feel every single day? What is your choice? How do you choose to feel? What is going to be your set point? What do you choose to feel? Not because anything else is out there. How do you choose to feel? How are you going to feel moving forward? What is your choice? Here's my choice. I want to feel abundant. I want to feel in love. I want to feel on purpose. I want to feel grateful. I want to feel happy. I want to feel in joy. And there is no circumstances that are going to change that. Whether I make money, lose money, in relationship, out of relationship, deaths, whatever. I'm not, I'm, that's how I'm choosing to be. I'm choosing to be on it. That's how I choose. So what I would like you to think about today, I'd like you to think about how you would like to feel day in, day out. And I'd like you to notice what triggers you out of it. Okay, so this is what you need to do for the next 24 hours. I need you to notice what triggers you out of it. Tomorrow, I'm not going to be doing any teaching. We're going to jump straight into a recode focused on triggers. What triggers you out of the end result feeling? Does that make sense? We're going to make go through your triggers. I'm going to teach you how to connect to your superconscious notice a trigger and neutralize it so you can still take the right action but without those other emotions that are just not necessary does that make sense for for example let's say a family member triggers you okay well there's an action to take to talk to them about it or whatever right but you don't need to have that action take you completely off emotionally and make bad decisions and get and emotionally eat and get pissed off right so we can have information, we can have content without the emotion. And that will be our game plan tomorrow. So for the next 24 hours, I want you to make a list of what triggers you. Can you do that? Give me a yes. I want you to let me know what triggers you, what knocks you out of your end result. Is it looking at your bank account, not seeing enough in there? Is it thinking about the world? Is it clicking onto a news feed and seeing all this? Is it talking to someone you care about and them not being healthy? Is it worry? Is it... Is it thinking about future events? What triggers you? For tomorrow's session, we are going to need a list of all the things that trigger you. And then tomorrow, we're going to recode all their memories, events, systems, processes, thoughts, memories, emotions, so that those triggers aren't there. Does that sound like a good plan? If you haven't done day one, please make sure you do day one because tomorrow, 
we're, we're doing recode. You must have watched the intro session. Otherwise your brain won't understand. Your brain won't understand what to do in the recode if you haven't been taught. So I love you guys so much. Thank you for sharing this out. I'm here on Zoom, same time tomorrow and YouTube. Please share YouTube out. Please subscribe. I'm doing this for free this week only, putting my heart into it. I'm here with you guys. And the only thing I ask is share it, share it, share it. Same time as it was today, tomorrow. I will email you with the replay. I'll email you with a link, okay? Uh, same time tomorrow, share it out. Have a fantastic day. Be magnetic, stay in your end result. Bye for now. See you tomorrow.